After filming hundreds of abandoned locations in Pennsylvania, many of you have brought to my attention that I may have accidentally caught some paranormal evidence without even realizing it. I've always been a skeptic considering that nothing out of the ordinary has ever happened to me in any of the locations that I've explored, but lately things have gotten a bit strange. So here's the deal. After looking into some of your claims, I'm actually intrigued by how much evidence there is. I've decided that I'm going to actively seek out some of the most so-called haunted locations in Pennsylvania. Whether it be an entire town or just an intersection, there are plenty of so-called haunted locations in every Pennsylvania town. This is one of them. The first ghost story that I ever heard as a child was about a lady dressed in a white wedding dress that hitches rides up there on that huge mountain. She gets in your car and is very polite, but doesn't say much. Then when you pass the curve at the devil's elbow, she disappears. Now trying to wrap my five-year-old mind around this story wasn't easy at the time. It wasn't until I got a bit older that I started to put together the history, and a lot of it points back to a time long before my own. So I'm going to break this down into three subjects. The first being the factual history of the location. The second we will focus on the legend itself finally followed by my investigation and the end result that I myself come up with. Now with that being said, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm right. It simply means exactly what it is. Evidence that I've come across to make the legend a true story or a made up myth that was created long ago for someone's entertainment. So let's get into the history. According to webs.com, major development on the Wapsinonic Mountain area, part of Allegheny Mountains, located west of Altoona, Pennsylvania, originated in the late 1880s when a group of local businessmen decided to exploit the cooler summer temperatures and scenic beauty found at the top of the mountain, also to take advantage of the recent discovery of a rich vein of coal in the northeast corner of Cambria County near the village of Doherty. Prior to the development of Wapsie in the late 1880s, a smaller Wapsinonic hotel existed on the mountain. The following appeared in the Altoona Tribune April 4, 1889. Almost directly in front of the new house is the old Wapsinonic Hotel, which is dwarfed by the statelier building which is now being erected. This old building has been built for at least 40 years, having been erected by Mr. Alex Holliday of Hollidaysburg, who then owned the property, and for whom Mr. Thomas Keyes was tenant. Mr. Keyes afterward bought it, and the present company bought from him shortly before his death. The contrast between the two houses is most marked, yet both represent the period in which they were built. The centerpiece of the resort community was the Wapsinonic Hotel. The hotel was a 60-room, three-story wooden structure with a large veranda across the entire front and along the left side. Wapsinonic was written across the top front of the hotel. Other resort attractions included a dance pavilion, bowling alley, baseball field, shooting range, merry-go-round, and lawn tennis courts. A mountaintop forest fire destroyed the hotel along with many of the cottages located on Lookout Road on April 30th, 1903. Fire damage to the hotel was estimated at $25,000 and insurance on the building was only $2,500. So the historic Wapsinonic Hotel was never rebuilt. An outstanding attraction near the Wapsi Resort was the four-story observation lookout tower at the edge of the mountain. It opened in June 1891, and it was said that on a clear day, one could view six counties from the top platform. After the Wapsie Hotel was destroyed by a forest fire in April 1903, regular maintenance ceased on the lookout tower, and its condition deteriorated until it was raised date unknown. The Wapsie Railroad, originally a narrow-gauged railroad but standard-gauged in 1916, extended about 15 miles from Juniata near Altoona, Pennsylvania, west to the plateau of Wapsinotic Mountain, and then to Doherty and Cambria County, and was first operated to the mountaintop on June 11, 1891. After the loss of Wapsie Hotel in 1903, the railroad continued to transport picnickers and sightseers until lack of fun forced abandonment in 1919. Okay, so now that we know the history of Wapsinotic Mountain, Let's move on to the legend. 
The story in a nutshell goes as follows. There are several legends of the White Lady of Wapsie. One legend reports the White Lady is looking through Wapsie Mountain for her baby. The baby was thrown out of the horse and carriage while rounding Devil's Elbow, a dangerous curve that still exists on PA Wapsie Mountain to this day. The legend says that the baby was never found. The other story, which is the story that I'm more familiar with, is that her and her husband had an ill-fated crash over what's known as the Devil's Elbow as you head into the city itself, where both of them tumbled over the side of the mountain. According to legend, she is seen looking for her husband on foggy nights, has been picked up as a hitchhiker, and her reflection is not seen in the mirror. But she always disappears around the Devil's Elbow. That's the story that I heard growing up, and I guess we'll never know what the actual story is. Or will we? Another theory that many people believe is that the woman in white is the ghost of Margaret Gray, who in 1926 tragically crashed and tumbled down the mountainside at the Devil's Elbow while running moonshine from Cambria County with a man named Chester Troutman. Now, Troutman survived the crash, and many rumors have flown around about the ordeal ever since. Sadly, there are hundreds of accidents at the Devil's Elbow, and just as many ghost sightings. So, let's go see if we can find ourselves a ghoul in white while we explore this treacherous road. So this is where most of the sightings of the White Lady or Lady in White are seen. I don't know why, but it seems like she gets picked up on this road and then when they head back down the mountain into Altoona and they pass the Devil's Elbow, that's where she disappears, but this is usually where she gets picked up, supposedly. And there's also many claims of UFO sightings up here. After all, it is the top of the mountain, so you can see everything pretty clear, so I don't doubt that. This is a daytime shot of where the lookout tower used to be. Okay, here it is folks. Here is the Devil's Elbow. Now, obviously I'm going straight and filming from side of a car but this is a very very steep turn steep turn <laughs> and down there is it's you're going off the mountain it's a cliff so this is it and I probably shouldn't be filming while I'm driving but on the most dangerous curve there is but it
guys, this isn't a joke. This is messed up. Alright, I know, I'm sorry, but honestly, that was better than just ending it going down a dark road, right? But in all seriousness, whether the lady in white is looking for her baby, her husband, or possibly bootlegging some strong moonshine, I'm sure this legend will live on for generations to come. Now just because I didn't pick up the lady in white doesn't mean she won't hitch a ride from you. So keep those cameras handy. Thanks for joining me on debunking the dead. Check it out, man. I mean, this merch is like really sick.